This is Angela with Infectious Magazine here with Hit the Lights. How are all of you? We are all doing wonderful. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. So you have your upcoming release, which is out at the end of the month. How are you feeling about it? Uh, ready for it to be out already. It's been done for so long. And we've been sitting on it just waiting for everybody to get a chance to hear it. So the hardest part is just waiting. That is so true of life in general. The hardest part is waiting. <laughs> Now, you've talked about the search for a new singer when Colin quit several years back and the struggles of finding someone who fit. What do you think personally that it takes to be a successful band member and contribute to a team like that? I, I think uh, everybody kind of has to know that they want to do it. You know, that was one thing that like Colin, I think he figured out that he didn't want to be there anymore. So uh, when Nick like filled in those shoes from coming from guitar, we already knew that he wanted to be there, so that kind of made it easy for us, you know. Now, having been on a major label like Universal and then talking about their transition between majors and independents, what were some of the biggest surprises and challenges that you faced? Anybody else? I know, you guys are so quiet. I never talk. We usually are pretty quiet. Oh, you guys are just here to look good, huh? <laughs> I think we do such a good job. It was a video <laughs> interview, so we sat next to you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess with Universal, uh, it was just like a lot of um, not knowing what they wanted, you know. They, uh, I don't think that they knew what they expected from us. They literally didn't have their heads like in, in the right place for doing rock music, you know. They're kind of geared more towards like that bigger pop stuff right now. And for us to try to write songs for them, it was just like no direction whatsoever. Um, Anything that we that they tried to give to us, like sound like this or sound like this, we would, you know, go out and try to like write something like that, but it never worked out right. So it was it was a good thing that we got off that label. Now, how has the process of releasing new music been hurt by the record label's role in your music, such as you know how it took longer than you originally planned? Um, that's definitely like. The worst part about it, I would say, was just like the fact that we haven't released anything since uh, the EP that we did in '09. Um, but luckily, like fans have been very supportive. It's just you should always write for yourself, and not you know for the label, and you should always like do whatever you want to do. So that's kind of how that's impacted us on that. You guys have talked about missing being on the road and that when you're home you want to be back on the road and it's not the first time I've heard that. So how would you describe that lifestyle to people who, like me, just don't understand that draw of being away from home? Um, I guess it's hard once you get on the road, it's hard missing your family and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, myself, I've actually missed a lot of my friend's weddings and stuff that you can never go back and do. But then when you're home, you're with everybody, but you miss all of these guys, especially, and then uh, playing every day and stuff like that, seeing new cities. That's just what our lifestyle is. The other bands kind of become your friends and, like, you know, your other family and stuff like that. You end up missing them when you're home, and you, you know, you see the same sights every day when you're home. And when you're on tour, you know, you're in a different city, you're going to Vegas, or New York, or LA, you know, and it's, you're eating food you can't get at home, you're doing things with your friends that, Yeah. <laughs> now, the industry has obviously been undergoing a lot of changes, as you've commented on before. Where do you see the industry in 10 years, and how would you like to be a part of the change? I can't think of anything in 10 years at this point. <laughs> Five years. I hope to be dead before 10 years. <laughs> I don't think there's that gonna can be, be arranged. I don't, gonna, I don't think there's going to be an industry in 10 years. Really? Yeah, I mean, at this point, like, there, I think that it'll just get back to, like, maybe, like, no labels or anything and bands just doing it themselves. Yeah, like, there's, there's no telling what's going to happen. Something, something new is about to come along and just take everything a different way, so it's gonna I'm just be, ready to watch and see what happens. It's going to be us at home playing as holograms. <laughs> I hope How so. How cool. <laughs> 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 
How did each of you get into playing music? Uh, I'm from Ohio, and there's nothing to do there. So <laughs> that was it. My parents forced me to choose an instrument in the concert day. Really? <laughs> well, it was quit. a good. I hope you thank them. And I tried to quit like four years later, and they said no, and that's why I'm here. So it's their fault. <laughs> uh, my great grandpa, my grandpa, and my dad all played guitar. Wow. So I was just kind of going to play guitar anyway. Yeah. So. What is your guilty pleasure? Um. You mean the legal guilty pleasure? <laughs> <laughs> the G rated? Whatever you want. I think, yeah, like when people say guilty pleasure, like my mind just instantly goes to like the wrong thing. <laughs> it's like, yeah. My mind's already on the wrong thing. Yeah. It just goes a little further. Um, I'd say, I'd say for me though, uh, I guess Twitter, like getting caught up in Twitter, like. Really? If, yeah, if I didn't like have to use it, I, I probably wouldn't, but uh, like it, it's a good outlet for, you know, keeping in with like your fans and stuff. But it's, you know, just updating it like all the time is just too much. It's just funny. <laughs> Mine is uh, when I get too drunk, I, I buy random apps on my iPhone, and I don't remember until the next morning. <laughs> First answer. He's a saint. He has no guilt. No, no, no. I just I have no guilt because I milkshakes, cereal, I'm proud of all of it. Though. It's not a guilty pleasure if you just don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. What is one question that you'd like to be asked but never have been, and what's the answer? Uh, that's a question that's like wrapped in an enigma. Yeah, exactly. um, um, I don't know, I guess uh, one question. Uh, the only question I haven't been asked is what do you look like naked? Still wait. Oh, and the answer is fantastic. I was going to say you have the answer on it. There we go. Kevin, Kevin came to I ask you that every morning. Yeah, but that's, you don't do it with a microphone or a camera. That's, that's where things really change. Is there anything else you guys would like to add? Just uh, check out our new record when it comes out on the 31st. If this is out by then. Uh, go Giants. Yeah. That's go the blue. second time tonight. Go Blue. You're up, boys. That's right. Thank you very much.